Welcome to the Vancouver and Fraser Valley Real Estate Market Forecast. Here we update the market every week or two as to what the sales are doing with the sell-through rates and the market trend indicators. We interview an expert in each of the 14 market areas and get their take on how things are adjusting. Okay, let's quickly review the Vancouver market. The Vancouver index is new to us. For the last two weeks, we've seen the Vancouver market go up from 100 sales to 110. Their inventory basically the same. So they're at 35% sell through. This is extremely high. This is a very strong market where prices should be going up substantially each month. Richmond, which had been at a 13% sell through in the last two weeks ago, uh, they've gone from their 61 sales the previous two weeks to 90 sales the last two weeks. So they've recovered from their large onslaught of inventory as the Chinese investors that are, were speculating by purchasing all the homes in November, December, January and put them back on at a substantially higher number flooded the market. So our current inventory is at 996 homes in this Richmond Ladner area and that is up from the traditional 550 at this time last year. But they're stable, they're at 18 percent sell-through. So that's enough to theoretically stabilize the market. Whereas the previous two weeks we felt we lost perhaps even $150,000. Now here in East Vancouver 30 percent sell-through, 35. Here's Burnaby one more time setting an all-time record at 43 percent sell-through. So that's very, very strong. And as we come out to the valley here, Maple Ridge, which managed to pick up its socks a little bit, it was sitting at 10% previous two weeks. They're now at 52 sales, which is quite a bit up from their 35 sales only the two weeks prior. White Rock is hard to determine. Remember, this is only 16 sales, so it's a very, very small marketplace. One or two sales makes quite a difference in their sell-through rate. Surrey's here, the ones with the most listings right now. They've got 1,611 listings. That's a lot. Uh, their sales, they're basically stable. It is 18% sell through. And you move on out. Abbotsford is the low, and their inventory is just a little bit higher. So this is a reasonable sell through rate. Uh, it's poor, but it, it, it's reasonable. Uh, and here's Chilliwack setting the record for the valley here at a 19% sell-through. They had 29 sales the previous two weeks and they've jumped up to 63. And that's basically with exactly the same inventory. So they're the ones that have gone from the 7% to the 19%. Okay, that summarizes previous two weeks sales to listings then the ratios. Uh, let's have a look at uh, the one prior to this which was right here. You can go to Vancouver Market Reports to see all of these reports and as we'll move into the graphs that show our MTI we can see here uh, MTI, the Market Trend Index, uh, tells you whether or not next month we'll have more or less listings. So here in Burnaby 87 percent sell-through rate. So that's for every hundred new listings they take they're selling 87 listings. So that means the following month that they're going to be light on listings. So there's a lot more pressure coming on Burnaby, East Van, North Van, and Coquitlam. And everybody else is pretty stable, all around the 50%, 40% range, which means the following month there will not be an increase in listing inventory. You can see all of these reports going all the way back to to February 4th when we first started tracking the Richmond growth at 32 percent here. Richmond was having the very very strong market at the same time Burnaby was actually reasonably reasonably stable at 17 percent sell through. Well that's all changed. Richmond has now dropped dramatically and Burnaby has gone up dramatically. So there's the difference for the market trends. Now we're going to do an interview with Austin K from Austin K and Anita Chan in the Richmond market here. They are specialists in this market and they're going to give us an update on how the Chinese investor, the speculator, actually came in and basically controlled the Richmond market starting in early November, December, January and then putting them back on the market in most cases without ever paying for the property. So they're 5% down 
and their five-month completions and being able to flip them for let's just say two hundred thousand dollars profit per so that was um, a very interesting manipulation of our market we're glad it's stabilized and we hope we don't see that too often let's go talk to Austin K now Hi, Bill. It's Austin Case from uh, from Remax out in Richmond. Yeah. Oh, Austin, fantastic! I'm glad you called in. So, listen, we're all really anxious to see what the market's doing there. And let me explain who you are. You and Anita Chan have your own Remax company under the umbrella of Remax West Coast, right? That's right. And and what's the name of your company? Uh, it's Remax Austin K Realty and Remax Anita Chan Realty. Excellent. Now, you, you two are uh, burning up a storm in Richmond, so we really appreciate your input as to what the market's done. Now, we've talked in the past, back in November, December, January, we saw a, a contingent of investors that we have to call speculators that did a very uh, organized campaign to send out letters to perhaps the majority of the, their target homes in Richmond to solicit sales. Does that sound about right? Yes, that's right. And and th these vendors might have got even more one or two letters. And the would you say how many groups would you say were involved in trying to control the market or buy everything they could? I think there's you know three companies out there that were trying to um, to do this. But one of the companies was a little bit more predominant, more aggressive than the uh, the other companies. Now is that Newland? Uh, what is it? Newland Corp or something like that? Yes, that's right. Okay, so bottom line is they came in and they did a very good job of, of buying product in the, let's say, the seven 800 range. And then towards the end of January, they were ready to, I hate to use the word flip it, but if you only own it for a few months, then that's what they were doing, right? Yeah, well, they didn't even <laughs> actually own the properties because they were purchasing the properties uh, with a longer completion term and then they were trying to assign it before they actually had to take over on the property. So am I, if I've heard right from, from various sources that as little as 5% down, 5 month completion dates and assign it before you have to pay for it, right? Right, yeah. Now this, these three groups then turned around and put them back on the market. Now when did you first see them coming back on at the higher price? Was that sort of middle of March, first of March, or earlier than that? No, it probably started right at the end of December. So, you know, shortly after they acquired some of the properties in November and December. At the end of December, I started to, to see some emails come through with, uh, with properties that were just recently acquired, uh, being uh, for sale again, um, and it went from probably January to the end of March that they tried to assign what they had on uh, in their sort of inventory. Now, how successful were they? Did out of let's just say thirty or forty homes by, let's say Newlands, do you think they turned around and basically flipped most of that, eighty percent, fifty percent? Oh yeah, I would I would think they flipped at least eighty percent of what they. Uh, what they had acquired and whatever they they couldn't sell uh, on assignment, they uh, completed on them and sold them again on MLS uh, um, after they completed on them. Wow. Now, Austin, I'll have to say this quite honestly. In my 28-some years in real estate, I have never seen a group be that organized to control a market. And, and let's be honest, they controlled your market, did they not? Like, I mean, they basically bought anything on a, what, a 50-foot lot that was under 50 years old that was a three-bedroom home, right? Yeah, they were definitely targeting, you know, good properties just to make sure that they were resaleable in the future. Um, so they did uh, come in and uh, acquire and tie up uh, several properties in, in our market. And and I'm assuming they stayed away from townhouses, or did they? Yes. Yeah, yeah it was just detached properties on bigger lots. Right. Okay, so anyhow, bottom line, with a very organized scheme that they were able to tie up a lot of properties and within two or three months uh, flip them for, what do you think? Do you think they made 200000 a piece or what? Yeah, plus or minus, uh, wherever the market, uh, whatever the market would bear, definitely uh, in that sort of uh, uh, profit range. Wow. Well, that that is really quite amazing. But now, when they, when a lot of this came back on the market, as we look at the numbers right here ourselves, we saw that uh, the market actually slowed down there like four or five weeks ago, and there was a glut of inventory in the Richmond area, and. Uh, 
you know, I, I think at one point we sort of felt that there was even a $150,000 drop. And now I'm saying, you know, let's say what's substantiated here, but I've seen vendors say they're 800, or $800,000 home. Uh, at least I know one particular gentleman says he's offered one point two, And uh, then after the inventory comes on, you know, that goes right down below a million again, right? But what are your thoughts? Do you think uh, the high prices that being received, say, in the middle of February uh, when we had our adjustment there, did it did it settle down pretty good? Yeah, it has settled down. Obviously, supply and demand is a lot more properties on the market because the uh, homeowners in Richmond have seen the, the property values increase. So um, they've just decided that uh, now might be a good time to take advantage of the opportunity rather than, you know, wait a year or two down the road from now where they may have um, sort of ultimately planned, but this has just kind of expedited their process because the prices are good right now. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely a lot more inventory on the market because of that. Okay. Now, by the way, here's a few numbers. Now, this one includes Ladner. Now, is Ladner fair to include or should we avoid it? Probably not. It's a totally different market than Richmond. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, I'm not looking at the right numbers here, but on Ladner, we had, uh, including Ladner, we had 294 sales in March, and then we dropped to 158 in April. Like, that's almost right. in half, right? Uh, yeah, I guess yeah, I guess you could sort of look at some of those numbers as well because a lot of the Richmond sellers were heading out to Ladner. Right, right. So obviously, if you can't sell in Richmond, you're not going out there. So I mean, seriously, that is going from 294 to 158. That is a right. serious drop. But then the inventory went from 75 to 940, 775 to 945. So we had a you know quite an increase in inventory. So. What used to be a 30% sell-through back in February, March, which is incredibly high, dropped down to 15%, and right now has come up 17, 18%. So today, according to uh, the, you know the SRT, the sell-through rates, the absorption rates, we should be pretty close to stable. What do you think? Uh, I would think so. There's not as many homes coming on the market right now. Um, uh, so that's uh, you know a good sign. Hopefully things will balance out a little bit more. Okay, good. Well, I'll tell you. I'll be I'll be honest, Austin. I was a little nervous here because if the media would have uh, you know called fire about three or four weeks ago, it would have hurt the entire Lower Mainland market. You know, as being manipulated. But I think the fact that the sales are now back up to 200, and these are legitimate sales. You tell me out of mm -hmm. the last. I, I realize this includes Ladner, but. The last 200 sales, how many of those do you think are pure speculators are planning to flip again? Anybody? Uh, I'm sure there might be a few people sort of late in the game, but I think a majority of them are uh, definitely um, looking more long-term than speculators. Let's put it this way. The, out of 200, let's say the absolute majority are end users planning to live in the home and they're not trying to flip it in the month of August or something, right? So Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so I, I'm going, whew, thank goodness that's over because uh, I, I hate to say it, but I think our marketplace got played like a fiddle here, like that somebody has within three months pulled off a $200,000 profit for every home they tied up without actually paying for it. That's uh, a good lesson. That's a good lesson on how to make money, but... For all those that made money, it actually cost the people that didn't make it, right? So, yeah, I don't call it a win-win. I call it a win-lose. But anyhow, mm -hmm. okay, so now the market's stable again, and um, we keep hearing about um, China may have a new rule coming out on July 1st to try and uh, tax money coming out of China or to somehow or other try and stop the the flow a little bit. Um, I know Ellen Ma here on the team here has said he, he's seen them try for the last three years and he'll believe it when he sees it. But have you heard any hint that there might be some Chinese government rules that will affect the flow of money out of China? Any thoughts there? Um, no, I, ha I haven't heard anything sort of specific uh, in, regards to, uh, in regards to that. Now, in your opinion, uh, the the incoming new money from China should probably continue to be a flow for how long? What's your gut reaction there? Do you, you see any abatement at all or not? 
It's hard to say, but uh, definitely, you know, in our uh, marketplace, uh, being in Richmond here with a heavy influence of Asians already, they like it here, and you know, they could uh, uh, fit in very comfortably with the uh, the atmosphere that we've got here in the community that's already here. So it's definitely uh, popular for that, and uh, I, I guess it's good for our real estate market because of that. Now, uh, Austin. Uh, We've talked about this in the past, but let's just say some around 50% of all of your buyers, or maybe even more than that, are mainland China. Would it be as high as 60 or 70? What are your thoughts there? I don't think it would be as high as that. There's still a good uh, sort of moving up and moving down market here. I think a lot of um, you know the new money that's coming in from uh, outside of our local Richmond market, I would say would be a good you know 50%. Uh, 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 mainland China, China buyers and money coming in, and a good portion is still from uh, other areas of uh, of the world. Right. Um, now, and by the way, I mean I think the general uh, analysis there is uh, mainland China is producing a lot of billionaires, like a hundred billionaires now, and right. uh, those people are in a great country to make money and a terrible con- country to save your money. So. I think we'll still continue to see the desire, the need to put some safe money away in foreign countries, and Canada will continue to be one of the top, I'm going to say, top five recipients of that. And, Absolutely. And uh, so on the long term, uh, in fact, it, we've talked about this in the past, but f- uh, how many of your clients do you think actually the husband may spend most of his time in mainland China making money and the family is actually here in Richmond. Is that a majority? Yeah, that would be a good yeah, that would be a good majority of uh of um of not just our clients, but uh, a good majority of the the Richmond type of uh uh households. So uh, uh that so, that have been here in the last little while. So Austin, uh, this changes a, an old uh cliche for many years and you know, as I go to price a, a home anywhere, I have often said to my clients, well, what has that got to do with the price of tea in China? And by George, today it does, because that's where the, I, I see that we will continue to be flavor of the of the world for Chinese to put their safe money. And if you were to name the two or three things that makes it really attractive for buyers, and remember, there are going to be Chinese people reading this and listening to this podcast right here. Uh, if you're selling Richmond, uh, we've got political stability. We've got a good banking system. We don't get nationalized. We've got a, an actual democracy. What else would you say are strong things? Well, that- where, yeah, where we are, I guess, uh, geographically in, in Richmond here, you know, we're close to the airport, very easy to commute. Uh, uh, good weather, um, direct flights to overseas, um, a huge uh, Asian influence of the uh, uh, Asian community that is already here, so that you fit in very well if you were uh, if you're of Asian descent and you've got your shops, your restaurants, uh, everything's here for you. And uh, you know, Canada is a, a great place to be, and um, West Coast. Obviously, the climate's a lot better here than it is back east. So, you know, all of those uh, contributing factors for, uh, have made Vancouver and Richmond uh, uh, a very pl- uh, a good, pleasant place for people to live and to uh, um, to invest in. Awesome. And, and well, by the way, I, I personally have accepted in the last few months that out here in the valley, you know, Abbotsford, Langley area, we've always counted on our commuter commuting in towards Annis's Island or Vancouver, and he will pay more the closer he can get to his workplace. Well, in your area, if a good portion of your clients are commuting to mainland China for work, which we just have satellite commuters, and the closer to the airport, the more valuable it would be to them, right, rather than, say, the far ends of Coquitlam, Port Moody or something. Right? Sure, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Isn't that strange? So uh, Canada has just moved into... Uh, an economic uh, reality that our commuters, a good chunk of them, f- uh, take a plane rather than the bus. So how about that, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, well, listen, Austin and Kay are experts in the Richmond market. So if you want first-hand knowledge of what's going on and to make an informed decision, you need to talk to Austin. And Austin, what's a contact number for you? 
Our, our, uh, our number here in Richmond is uh, 604-351-2841, 604-351-2841. And uh, we can also be contacted by email. It's uh, austin at austink.com, A-U-S-T-I-N at A-U-S-T-I-N. Okay, and I encourage everyone to uh, click through the websites, and there will be links here from uh, from the Richmond Market directly to Austin's sites. Austin, I really appreciate your time, and you're very informative, and I sure appreciate you being part of the team here as we try to understand the market changes in the Lower Mainland. Great. Thanks, Bill. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, thanks a million. Bye-bye for now. Okay, bye-bye. Well, that was a great interview with Austin as we fully understand uh, the market manipulation in Richmond in the spring of 2011. We look forward to many more interviews with other top agents throughout the lower mainland of British Columbia here as we understand our market and make forward projections to protect homeowners and investors. Bye-bye for now. See you next two weeks.